So Alluvium is giving us even more details about some of the alluvials and the plant life and structures for the land that's coming in the overworld. So today, guys, we're going to break down some of the leaks that they gave on the forums here. And I have to say, I'm really excited for this. If we do get the private beta and it's the overworld, even more excited. But if we only get the survival, just the updated version, that's cool too. I will be covering on our, my channel here. So guys, let's jump into the leaks and I'll try and break it down for you. The first leak would be the Flish. This is the frog salamander character that I believe it's a tier one, if I'm not mistaken, or is a tier zero, but I, I believe this is the lower forms. I think it goes up to the stage threes. So with the horns looking smaller, I believe that's like the smaller version of it, but this is the fire type and this is uh, the movement animation that you will be seeing with him in the game. Now, this is probably like the stationary looking type of um, movement that he's doing right here, but once he actually does a taunt or something, then that could be something different, but there he is. Next is the Atipo character. This is the, uh, you know, has a few different affinities, but this one's the fire type. Definitely looking pretty fire-ish. Can't say that uh, this is bad in any way because I think it's really polished the way it looks. The elements really look nice on him, but I have to say that if I'm being biased, um, I do think that the the at the card version of him, like when you see him on the deck, looks so much better. I just happen to have it right here, and dudes, this guy looks like it looks like a cat or a dog <laughs> in this kind of angle. So really cool looking. But I hope they captured this, you know, this type of feel because I do know, like, I don't think they take the 3D model and then make a photo of it for the deck right here. I think that. Perhaps they take an art version of it and then put it there and then they build a 3D model of the art from like this picture right here. So really cool looking, but this is how I like them. I really like the look of that. Next, they introduced us some skins of the Mozart. This is called the Ideation. Uh, so, you know, coming up with different ways that they can put skins on Mozart is cool. And I, you know, I feel they're doing this because of the the fun factor of the game usually when you have a a game that comes out and you have default everything uh when they have skins that you can purchase on the store people will do that if they're fun and cool looking or just have you know the increase the fun factor of the game these skins perhaps these are going to be blueprints that we can get from the land but you know with a disco ball a candle and a macaron i think uh these are something that people might even just pick up the next ones would be the sheepskin, uh, the monster, which actually looks like a brain, and the Halloween, which definitely I would pick up if I had that one for Halloween. Really cool. And next, we've got the Dark Hollow, which I feel this is actually going to be something that's default uh, to some of the skins we're going to be getting. If you can get that rare default Hollow skin, then there you go. You've got it. The Crystal Shore, so we actually have land skins as well and the mozza ball this is like a pokeball looking character which you know what i think this is like top tier right here that one and this one and actually all three of these look pretty cool next we have some of the um this is like plant life i believe but it looks like in the form of a butterfly so um yeah you, you could probably see these in some of these lands here let me just go to the next one we have the I believe that's the labyrinth type of area. Really cool. Same type of plant, different color. This one could be like the Halcyon Sea version of that. If this doesn't actually like turn into a, a, a some sort of creature that flies away inside of the world, then I'll be amazed. But yeah, this is just the plant, I'm assuming. This one's an anomaly. I think this could be the um, Crimson Waste level skin theme of the same plant and then the tiger bore this is like that ice level feel of the plant really cool and finally we are into the alluvials this is the lynx character uh, i believe this is the fire type and guys i have to say like i think in my personal opinion don't you know take my word as advice or anything like that but i think when the alluvials the alluvatars come out the you know the nfts that we can get um, I think with the Aluvatars, if you can't pick up an Atlas or a Ramphi or something like a 
you know, one of these lower stages, which I think are going to be the most popular. I think the Lynx would be your next go-to. I think these characters are going to be really sought after alluvials that people are going to like. So yeah, definitely. I would love to pick up one of these if I can, but the Lynx is definitely cool. We'll love to pick this guy up. And here we are with the, uh, different affinity of the same character. The could be a water or a wind type Wind, I would assume is more of like the white color and the water would be the blue. But since this has both of them, can't really be sure which it is, but I'm assuming this is the water version of the Lynx. Next, they showcase some of the affinities. Now, I don't know why this looks like there's a character in here, but um, I believe this is just like the, um, this is the affinity that pops up when the character is on the stage or does his ability. So I think this is what you're gonna see when, you know, one of the links, perhaps, when they do their affinity or their um, Omega power, you'll see something like this. And they have the tiers from tier zero up to tier five. So tier five being the highest one. So it's a, a much bigger affinity blast that they're doing here. We are introduced now into uh, the polar bear taunt. I believe this is like when you win the match, he will do this. He'll clench his fist like that and show you that he's the king. He won and you lost. Or that could be a pose that he does when you put him on the stage. So could be one or the other. Again, this is another another uh, pose. I'm, I'm really thinking that's the one that you will see like if you, if you win. <laughs> That's the finish pose, the victory pose that he does for the polar bear. And now we're introduced to some of the plant lives. I'm not sure if this is harvestable or not, but they're giving us, you know, um, a closer look at some of these plants. I believe that's from the left could be the Halcyon Sea, the right Tagiro Bore, will be ice level. And yeah, they're just showcasing it, how it looks. Uh, could be harvestable or not, but yeah. We're going to have a lot more plants and I'm going to, you know, give more detail about exactly why we have so much. But there it is. This is uh could be harvestable. Now they've uh, also leaked a few of the cards here of the alluvials, especially like the the flish characters. We're getting even more, you know, cards of of him and the Atipo as well. The Lynx and that sloth character. I'm really interested with that guy. That sloth character looks really interesting. Can't wait to see the final version of him. We also get more squiz of the three forms of the squiz right there and all of the um, Genesis characters we have here. Now, the only gripe that I have is like the Genesis characters, there's, you know, one or three forms of one, but it seems like on the newer ones we're getting, uh, all the affinities of the same one, which I'm worried about, like, because some of the games, when you have too many mirror characters, then it's not, not really innovative. So I hope that, you know, we only have 150 that I'm assuming. If we have more than that, okay. But um, we're getting a lot of the same character, which I'm hoping they, they you know, keep doing the innovation and giving us more different types of alluvials. Um, they did have a competition, you know, and, and uh, I think a Red Panda one. But uh, yeah, definitely, like, with the innovation, of the first Genesis, I thought that's really cool. So I really hope they keep going with that. But the purpose of that was to showcase the Pokemons and uh, the Pokemon cards and show us that, you know, if you were a Pokemon collector and you, you know, that was your childhood, then the Alluvium game will kind of relive that childhood for you with all of the Alluvatar, Alluvials that they're coming out with and the NFT forms of Pokemon inside Alluvium will, you know, kind of relive that experience for you, which Grant posted today. Now, me personally, I didn't collect the cards. I think I might have picked up some, but really wasn't a collector. And I'm kind of sad I wasn't, but I was more of a, um, I was more of a gamer. I played all the versions of, you know, the uh, gold, the red, blue, green, the sapphire, all those, you know, versions of Pokemon I played. I didn't get into the cards, but I got into the anime and I was really sad that I didn't pick this up, but definitely I will be into Alluvium and the NFT. So this is gonna be really cool to have that experience at least. And now we're introduced to some of the uh, structures of the land. This 
was yesterday I did a video on this, I believe, and I was saying, hey, this looks like one of the alien type of egg stuff, but this is what it looks like close up. I'm not even sure if you can harvest this, but it definitely doesn't look like, well, I don't know, maybe it does. It looks like something that's gonna pop out of there. And then we have some more of, um, this looks like it could be from the ice level, from the swamp level. And they're just giving us more information and, you know, visual information, visual uh, leaks of these plant lives. Here we have close-ups of the background. Now, I said before that this just could be a default land of all the plants and, uh, you know, showcasing everything here. So perhaps when they need it, they just pick it up and put it in that, that land. But, um, yeah, I think this is where everything goes when they're done with it. Just put it here and voila. I've always questioned if that's even a possibility if the plants will hurt you because some of these look like they can attack looks like they can attack or they're harmful i do know that uh, um i believe in the alluvium land if you're walking around and the the water is poisonous or hot or acidy then i think they mentioned that you will lose life like that or you'll just reappear back to the obelisk so if this is something that you know takes damage from you then yeah, we'll just have to see. This looks like it's from Brightland Steps. You have the pink color, really cool. And I, I wanted to say this because I think this is like, maybe this is true, but the Alluvium game, I feel like they're probably like 30% of the amount of work is actually going into the alluvials and the rest could be you know, maybe 50% is going into creating just plants and the the structures of the land. So this is why I feel you'll see a lot, you know, of updates and links on just trees and plants and some of the, you know, structures in the land because of so much work that's going into developing and creating the overworld. And of course, this is so detailed. Everything, you know, is so polished and uh, designed very carefully, like, at a um at a close up level you like when you go into inside here you can see like how much detail i'm sure they've done on these plants and some of the last stuff one of the last structures that we get was the uh airship this is i believe where we're going to hold the leviathan arena so if you get inside here i believe you can you know battle inside which is cool perhaps this ties into the story of this ship or this could be just like the main character ship well, i don't know we will just have to see but they said this is the airship. The Leviathan Arena could be in here. This is just, uh, you know, what we what what they're leaking so far. So looks pretty cool on the outside. And finally, we have some of the last the last leaks here, which was the live Alluvium live stream. I believe they're doing a live stream this week coming up. I think on Monday, but we are allowed to, um, you know, I think they're going to have an official live stream on Twitch that we can go on there and we can live stream and uh yeah you guys will be able to see us not sure if that's official yet don't quote me but i believe that's what they're you know trying to do also there is a meme competition if you guys want to join this not sure when it is but uh if you want to compete i believe there's prizes that you can win for a competition you just create some memes and there you go the ama could be coming soon, uh, but I know I'm going to be doing my own AMA hopefully next week. You guys, if you didn't hear that, um, supposed to be having Kieran come on and we're going to talk about, you know, so far what we've seen with the leaks and everything. So you guys make sure you tune in for that. Lastly, here is the battle arena. This is some of the ambient sounds that you will hear when you're inside of the arena. It's not exactly a soundtrack or music. It's just the ambient sounds. So really cool. So there you have it, guys. We've covered a lot of the leaks. Really cool that, you know, they're posting a lot of this. So I will try and cover all the leaks that come out henceforth. And, uh, yeah, give you guys my opinion about everything. Hopefully you guys watched this. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe. There's also some videos up here that you can check out if you want to know more information about Alluvium or even just survival and stuff. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. This is Godson, and I will see you on the next episode. Godson out.